And so, as we join the 2,000-strong crowd at the Brooklyn's Museum for the start of the 10th anniversary winter challenge to Monte Carlo, we see the first car away, a magnificent 1929 4.5-litre vintage Bentley. You all right there, madam? But it'll get a lot colder for Leon French with Guy Hewitt on an MGTC. Followed by Larry Rumble in the Ring-a-Ding Saab. Richard Mann certainly wants to get the right time, since his father drove this same car on the Monte Carlo Rally in 1935. George Melville and James Campbell get away on the Elvis Firefly. The first leg of the rally will see crews battling through France to Saint-Claude and the first overnight at Aix-les-Bains. Hugh Porter and Derek Jones on their Bristol 400 climb the famous Brooklyn's Banking built in 1907. All that remains of the world's first purpose-built motor racing circuit. Mick Walsh in the Lotus Elite of co-driver Peter Joy heads towards the first checkpoints with the rest of the field. At Goudhurst, in the Weald of Kent, crowds turn out to cheer the British crews in this amazing 220-car entry. Here, Peter Hall's Triumph GT6 looks shinier than it will for some time. As the MGA of Graham Lister and John Walsh enjoys the traditional dash down to Dover and the ferry, it's goodbye, White Cliffs, and stand by France. The British are coming with their crazy old car invasion. Past the Coco number one. We're going in. But the bright sunshine of northern France doesn't fool anyone into thinking this a Sunday afternoon fun run. Competitors know the challenge will drive all through the first night, and crews will be well south of Geneva before they next see their beds. Cars start from points all over Europe, and they'll join up in this most authentic recreation of the golden era of the Monte Carlo rally. As the cars head on into the night, the temperatures drop dramatically as the rally climbs into the Vosges mountains and the risk of black ice lurks round every corner. Dawn puts fresh strain on tired eyes and there's no let up until the breakfast halt at the traditional Monte checkpoint in the small town of Saint-Claude. Navigators hurry into the rugby club cafe to get their time cards stamped by the seasoned rally marshals. While for some drivers the excitement has been just too much. 400 croissants and six gallons of coffee disappear. But while some recharge their batteries, Willy Cave shines bright after 40 years of Montes. A brief respite and a chance for competitors to swap horror stories. Oi, matey, it's time to go! As the first cars head on into the mountings, mixing it with the minis is Alex van Tienhoven's Fiat Arbath. Back in St. Claude, Jane Wignall's arrived by battery power. Even Porsches are struggling for grip. Paul Merriweather uses Mercedes power. But avoiding polished wheel tracks, Neil Wilson heads for the outside showing the experience of a former RAC rally winner. Jos Willems and Hoob Hendricks are also big Merck mounted. As the rally cars continue to dance their way through this mountain range, 
known to the French as the Boogie. Stan Williams and Tony Davis press on in the XK120 Jaguar. heading towards the first regularity section, where crews have to maintain a set average speed. Not easy when you've been 26 hours on the road. The village of Ordenaz in the morning rush hour, David Bull's three-litre rover has a Dutch Volvo on its tail. On reaching Aix-les-Bains, the horror stories improve with the telling. But the strain is showing on the cars too. The Sprinzel Sebring Sprite of Andy Ackman and Robert Ellis is lying second overall but will soon retire with engine trouble, while the Abrams Herald Coupe is now limping with suspension problems. Paul Carter's Alvis 1250 is nippy round the corners and he's hoping to give the Bentley boys a hard time higher up in the mountains. Paul Gallagher is going well in his XK140. But the Brodericks are three up in their Riley 2.6 and the brakes are taking a hammering. Not so happy in the Westminster police car is James Ewing. As night falls after the long concentration run, competitors hear reports from tomorrow's mountain loop of hard ice and fresh snow. The toughest winter challenge is about to live up to its name. The route of leg two of the rally starts with one of the great names from Monte Carlo history, the Col du Granier, before turning left into the maze of small roads round Albertville. Today we'll test the skills of the very best crews. Colin Wheatley and James Krause take things steadily in the Volvo Amazon. While the Rumble's two-stroke Saab reaches the Granier summit sounding just like Eric Carlson in the 60s. Neil Lawson Baker needs a second bite of the cherry here in his rare Healy engined Facel Vega. But there's rarely any hesitation from Sandra Deacon in the Merryweather Merc. Peter Hall of the Daily Telegraph has Tony Jolly on the maps, so they get this tricky junction just right. Frank Fennell doesn't need the luck of the Irish as he revels in the conditions. Now things get even tougher. With a regularity test demanding an average speed of 45 kph, that's nearly 25 miles an hour. Doesn't sound that fast, but the whole section is on polished ice. Roy Meekings hustles the Rover 80 with plenty of confidence. But Hans Hübeling panics and pays the price.
Andrew Taylor skillfully avoids, but now he's got some work to do. Bert Dolk and Rob van der Falk managed to nip through in their Alfa Giulietta and gun it to make up for lost time. But on unsuitable tyres, Trevor Redpath's Bentley gets its cocktail cabinet shaken and stirred. Willing hands soon re-park the Bentley, while Andrew Taylor gets away in his Bristol 400. The queue gets going again but not without a little goodbye kiss to Don Pither's A40. From Reg Guy's Sunbeam Rapier. The Alpha of Jan Ebus, but he just can't keep his foot off those brakes. Now he's given himself a problem, but following car Frank Fennell, twice placed second on the event, has nowhere to go. Navigator Kevin Savage goes to see if he can sort things out diplomatically. Up ahead, flying Dutchman Ringa Gulika is fast and smooth in the Fiat 1600. Meantime, Frank Fennell decides gunboat diplomacy is the only way. Chains fitted, the Bentley tiptoes away. Michael Gabbett shows why the 404 was such a successful rally car. But Michael Joseph's Continental takes more stopping than an oil tanker. Up ahead, one snow-covered junction is causing confusion. Even Jeff Ord loses vital seconds on this regularity. But the Alpha, balked by one Bentley, gets rescued by another. American lawyer Mike Coons judges well enough in his MGB. Nigel Redwood is letting his son have a go. Must be a learning curve. But back in Aix, there is a new experience on the challenge, a special test dicing round cones, and every second counts. 
This manoeuvrability test is not meant for the vintagents, but Adam Hartley can't resist giving his Bentley a thrash. Jonathan Turner navigates. Leg three of the rally strikes out towards Aix-en-Provence by way of more mountain passes fabled in rally legend, like the Col de Rousset. As the cars leave Aix-les-Bains, or aix en pains as the British crews used to call it, competitors know that ice and snow on these passes are almost guaranteed. But already the pattern of the rally is emerging. Bert Dolk in the Alpha is still clean on the road, as is Frank Fennel's Volvo PV despite the earlier hold-up. Norwegians Ole Jürgensen and Bjarne Curran are the only other car without road penalties. But former European rallycross champion Bart Rietbergen is only a minute behind. Road penalties are counted in whole minutes, whereas penalties for regularities and tests account for mere seconds. But seconds mount up. Roy Perkins and Chris Pringle in the Ford Anglia can't admire the views. Richard Prosser and Rob Lyle are on course for another top ten finish. Stuart Wood has competed in every challenge so far. Another frequent competitor is David Hall, son of Ford Works driver Anne Hall. 
descending the Col de Rousset, the road emerges quite suddenly from bleak alpine landscape into the warmer, drier climate of the Mediterranean. The small village of Chamaloc reminds competitors of their destination as the field presses on towards a brief lunch halt at D, another town steeped in Monte Carlo rally history. But it's soon back on the road again for the climb of the narrow Col de Pen and the seventh regularity section of the rally. Jeff Ord and Peter Ward's MGA is followed by Toby Strauss and Ken Comrie in a TR3. The Hubans are going well in their Cooper. As are the Postons in their Frog Eye Sprite. But this Amazon seems burdened by its three-man crew. Murray Kyle drove his 250 Mercedes 12,000 miles on the peaking Paris without getting lost. But here, Murray tempts the following Maserati into herring off after him in completely the wrong direction. Now let's have another look at this. Is it left here? Or left half a K down the road? It's half a K down the road. There's no helping some people. Hugh Porter and Derek Jones get it right. Then nearly fall into the same trap laid by Demon Root designer Keith Port. It's at moments like this that a navigator can win or lose a silver cup. The real turning is 500 meters down the road. At least Andrew Daniels knows where he's going. The next village checkpoint is in the centre of the lavender growing industry. Frenchman Yves Moreau is testing his rover for the Around the World in 80 Days Motor Challenge and gets the impression that one villager has been sniffing too much of the local product. You think you are Sterling Moss? My God, what a nurse he made this from there. Go, 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 hey, hey, go. We've worn all the tyres out and the brakes is gone. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it's life, huh? It's brilliant. Yeah? What a night, like, stunning. Because we <laughs> cut and run the whole lot. Go on the ground. More snow, the better. Ask me later when I'm awake. It's a lucky if I get round. I was half asleep at the time. We misread the situation completely. And and point of me saying go, you go. No, Adam, Adam's got the face. It is your birthday. You I boiled a brake fluid. For its final leg, the rally heads out from the overnight halt at Aix-en-Provence towards the Côte d'Azur and Monte Carlo. As the route threads through a network of small villages, hardened rally men are struck by the quiet beauty of the Provencal countryside, even in winter.
Classic and sports cars Mick Walsh is up to 8th place overall in Peter Joy's Lotus. And Norway's Knut Hallen in the very standard Healy 3000 is on course to win the big sports car class for the fourth time in a row. David Liddell and Mark Janssen on their first historic rally were up to 10th but have dropped back. But Richard Thorne and Bill Granger's Zagato Lancia is steadily advancing into the top 10. Excellent. Good scenery. Nice people. But, but, Dutchman Bert Dolk has wrong slotted. From scrapping for the lead with Frank Fennel's Volvo, he's taken a wrong turning and dropped whole minutes. Now he's having to drive like fury to catch up. Fennel in the Volvo is taking things in his stride. Well, there's no need to hurry when you're winning, is there, Frank? But behind him, the advanced engineering of the Alpha's alloy twin overhead cam engine is being exploited for all it's worth. Others are pressing on too. Now the rally is entering the Alp Maritime, where every village and every road is steeped in Monte history. This is the famous Clou des Glains. Shadows lengthen on the Col de Vigotier, the final tight section before Monte Carlo. It'll be a close shave getting to the next control in the village of Gillette. It's a tough one, though. Yeah, yeah. Some ignore the crowd and the camera. 
Some even ignore hand signals. But at least the police can be relied upon to know how to cope with the traffic. That was very tight, that last yeah. one. Really tight. It's the first time we've lost time today. They are a good few minutes. So we've got to go and try and catch up the last little bit. But the rally isn't over. Above Monte Carlo, there is a final mountain circuit over the most famous pass of all, the Col de Turini. At the end of 1800 miles of motoring over five days, it looks like Bert Dolk and Rob van der Falk in their little Alpha Giulietta have done it. The cars line Casino Square as celebrities gather. Second on the Monte in 1952, Sterling Moss chats to Paul Easter, Mike Wood and Tony Ford. Well, I will be doing next week. Pride of place outside the Hotel de Paris belongs to the little Giulietta as the victorious crews get ready to receive the awards they've rallied so hard to win. Give a big welcome to third overall in the XP King of Paris car, Bart Reitberg and Ben Rutgering in the Volvo PG Type have tried harder. He has missed winning. He has missed winning by two seconds. Oh. Frank Fuller and Kevin Savage. After being bridesmaid three times here, I want to be best man sometime. I think this was a great route. The best rally I've done now, the marvellous, marvellous rally. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Philip. The winner is someone who came second overall on our classic marathon when we went into Morocco in the summer. Bert Dole and Rob van der Valk in the Little Alpha have won. Yeah!